Okay, joining us now is Cyril Yansuni. Cyril is the general manager of the personal computer group at Hewlett Packard. And Cyril, we mentioned that the HP 150 is a good example of one of the newest microcomputers in the field. Maybe you could run a demonstration program uh, for us and, and particularly point out the new technology aspects of it. Yes, I'd like to do that very much. Um, I think when we uh, set up to design uh, the HP 150, uh, we had in mind the uh, professional user, but the user who is uh, sophisticated in the use of information, but not sophisticated at all in the use, direct use of a computer tool. Uh, so we really focused on uh, uh, developing a technology and a total approach for a very intuitive use of a personal computer. And what we have embedded in uh, the HP 150, the most visible part is what we call touchscreen capability. The fact that you can interact directly with the personal computer without accessing the keyboard by basically using what is the most intuitive tool that you have, basically using your finger to point and select um, objects or select things on the screen. Could, could you show us with, the, like, with what you have up there? I would like to show you what we have on the screen there. What we have on the screen there is what I call an electronic Rolodex. Uh, we all are very familiar with the Rolodex on our desk. It's a set of cards and you can turn wheels back and forth until you see the right name as an example appears in front of you. We can do exactly the same thing here. I have an electronic Rolodex. It appears very much like a Rolodex on the screen and I can move it up. I can move it down just by pointing on the wheel on, uh, on the screen. I can go and select a name. Let's suppose that now I have uh, the set of names and I want to select a name there. I have Stuart a name there. I can just select that card and, and, and the Rolodex opens there and I get all the information that I have uh, embedded in the product on uh, Stuart Chaffee. I have his address, his phone number, and so on. As a matter of fact, if what I want to do next is call him, I just uh, indicate that I want to dial the phone, and uh, if I had a modem attached to the product here through a phone, I would automatically dial, dial the phone. So uh, let's go back to uh, the Rolodex, and uh, you can see then I can really roll it up, and I can roll it down, and I can do quite a few uh, things. You can recall, again, just by pointing, uh, the application. I can recall uh, the specific program or I could have selected again just by pointing to the screen another application. It is Touchscreen is not really new as a technology. It's kind of a, a new application of this in this computer. Is that right? That's absolutely true. Touchscreen is not new to technology. Uh, it's not a new technology. It has been used uh, on terminals mostly as again a pointing and a selection device. What we have done there is really embedding very well the touchscreen capability of the product with the software, with the application, and really trying to see everywhere we could replace keyboard access by basically pointing directly to the screen. Cyril, do you see a, a shift from using a keyboard to using touch, touch uh, screen, this touchscreen display? For example, uh, well, uh, we have lots and lots of applications that are written for small computer systems, and uh, how are you going to get all those programs to move over to a touchscreen? Okay, uh, I think that uh, the way we have designed the product, in fact, is by allowing very simply current and existing mm -hmm. application to basically use a touchscreen capability. The product itself has built the ability to recognize if you are putting your finger and really uh, selecting either a specific place uh, where, uh, where you want to put your finger on or an area where you have your finger uh, in that specific area. So you don't really have to burden the application itself by all that. It's really basically repla replacing the movement of cursor, mm -hmm. okay? But again, instead of having to move the cursor with, your, uh, with the keyboard or with any other device, you can really point to it directly with your finger. One of the criticisms, though, has been that, uh, that holding your finger up there in your arm would be kind of tiring. In fact, I heard somebody say that there was an attachment they, they thought was going to come out for the <laughs> HP 150, which is the little armrest, <laughs> and hold your arm up there while you're touching it. How do you, is, that, is there a problem with that, or is um, that just a rumor? <laughs> well, all the studies that we, have, that we have made, and we have very extensively tested the product, obviously, before uh, we put it on the market, show that this is really not a true, a true problem. You don't mm -hmm. really spend a lot of time with your hands up there and pointing to, to, to the screen. Um, I have my, my, myself a, a pretty good feeling that the ideal user interface, as a matter of fact, doesn't really exist. It's really going to come out of a combination and a lot of experimentation of a lot of the user interface that today exists, like touchscreen, like ability to move a cursor through a mouse or a tablet, probably one day also using voice. And I think it's going to be a combination of all those different user interfaces applied to very 
optimally to some specific type of application. I think there are going to be a good matching of the kind of user interface with the kind of application. So I think it's going to be a combination of all those user interfaces which are really going to make another step forward in user friendliness. Mm -hmm. I, I see two things looking at that machine that seem uh, new in technology. I see you've got micro floppies on there rather than the traditional five and a quarter inch. And I was wondering if you could comment on that. Also, there's a printer sitting in the monitor, which is something I haven't seen before. That's right. I'd like to, uh, maybe I'll start by the printer and then we'll go to the micro floppy. Let me give you a good example of, of the nice the nicety of really having a printer built in. As, you've see, as you can see, as a matter of fact, it doesn't even appear. It's really building the product there. It's user installable. It takes a minute or two from any user to basically get receive its, his printer and put it in, and install it in the product. Let's take a good example. Let's suppose, in fact, I, I really want to go back and reselect uh, this card. It's, again, your, your card uh, stored. It has information. I'd like to have a hard copy of that information. I'll just go and say print card, and uh, my printer is really going to start printing that card and in a couple of seconds we'll be able to tear it out mm -hmm. there and, and give it to you. The micro floppy, uh, it's an area where we also believe there that we are kind of pushing the technology. We're using, as a matter of fact, a three and a half inch uh, technology and I think that I have one, one in, uh, in my pocket here. It is a kind of semi-rigid uh, micro floppies. Um, it's, as you said, different than the five and a quarter, but has today basically uh, the same density, the same capacity as a bigger five and a quarter disk. As time goes on, as a matter of fact, we think over the next uh, several months, we see significant improvement in the capacity of those products, doubling and even quadrupling the capacity of those micro floppies, probably even getting to the range of a megabyte that you can basically carry with you. This is really the ideal, uh, we think, personal uh, uh, mass uh, storage uh, media. Uh, we have also seen tremendous reliability improvement using those kind of product, and one can really see why the semi-rigidity, the fact that it has an auto shutter, uh, so in some, some sense you never have outside contact with, with the media itself. Herb, we, we've seen an example, and Cyril's been showing us here, of, of one of the newer versions of a microcomputer. Where would things be going after that? We talked with Gary at the very beginning of the show about what's the next step. Uh, it, it will be in the direction that Cyril mentioned of uh, more user friendliness, as we tend to say. What's, what's the next stage in this evolution of hardware? Well, I think that uh, there are a couple of trends that we see evolving. Clearly, making the computer easier to use and making more software available that is easier to use is one of the trends. Another trend seems to be, especially in the business environment, networking the computers together. Because given your own computer and being able to do many things on that computer, it seems like this almost commands the next step as being, now let us interchange data between computer users, and uh, we see the local area networks and networking becoming a factor. I, I would agree with you on, on some of those points. I think that most of the networking, though, is going to be more in the in data communications over telephone lines, that is, linking the office with the home and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a tremendous network uh, throughout the whole world that is based on telephone system, and uh, I think we're going to just see a lot more evolution in that direction. The LANs have had a lot of problems in just setting up the networks, and they're very expensive, so... Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I agree, I agree 100 percent with that. I think that, in fact, we do have this network system, which is our telephone uh, systems. I also think there is another reason, in my opinion, we're going to see this very good matching between telephone networks and, and computers and personal computers, mm -hmm. is the integration of voice kind of capability as a user interface within uh, personal computers. And in that case, it makes even more sense then to be able to share basically the same media to transport your information. It's data information. It's text. It's also your voice. Okay, gentlemen, we're out of time. Cyril Yansuni of Hewlett Packard and Herb Lechner of SRI, thanks very much for being with us. On behalf of Gary Kildall, I'm Stuart Chaffee, hoping you'll join us again next week for another edition of the Computer Chronicles.